What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and a few people out there have pointed out that the pumpkin logo on the Haunting of Dance kind of resembles my logo which is really funny. Let me know down below if you also see that resemblance. But I went ahead and purchased the Saw bundle since I am a big fan of the Saw franchise overall. But in today's video we're going to be going over how to get your hands on the free Pumpkin Punisher Blueprint which is for the Grau Assault Rifle as well as the Cleaver Melee Weapon both of which you can unlock by taking part in a small trick or treat easter egg. Now, I know there were rumors of a full-length easter egg being live in Zombies Royale, but as of right now, there are no leads for that easter egg. I'll keep you guys updated if there are any leads, but I'm sure that full-length easter egg, if it's true, will probably go live in the next couple of days. Now, also as a reminder as well, I'm a bit under the weather, so excuse me if my voice does sound a little bit different, but essentially for this trick-or-treat easter egg, it gives you 16 different locations. You essentially have to loot any type of random boxes in those locations, and there's a chance that when you loot one of those boxes it'll actually find one of the 16 items and some of these items include stickers weapon charms i believe even a couple of sprays a watch which looks really damn cool so essentially this is very very based on rng which is not really surprising considering all the other warzone easter eggs which i've covered on the channel are also based on a bit of rng but you guys will see some are easier than others and it's just luck i mean you'll see when i drop military base i find it straight away some other locations do take a little bit longer which is unfortunate my biggest tips for this include doing this on plunder so you have unlimited respawns having a helicopter so you can actually fly around to each of those locations as fast as possible from my experience i was only getting about i want to say two per game so i can go to a certain location and loot seven crates and i may not find anything but sometimes i'll go to a location and the first crate i loot ends up having the item that i need again pure rng you're also depending on enemies who may be dropping where you are not to loot those crates because I can go to a location and all the crates could be looted and that's just it for that location for the remainder of the match. It gets very frustrating, but you guys will see. I get kind of lucky in some of these clips, right? We have military base and I think it was my first or second crate. I got it right away, so that was fairly lucky. And also remember, every time you open a crate during this event, you'll get confetti out of the crate that you open. Sometimes you get a lot of confetti out of the crate you open, which means you found the item that you need. Sometimes you have a small bit of confetti that comes out of your crate, which means means you didn't get anything but you can also get jump scared when opening these crates which to me is interesting they're not very scary but they're very loud and ear piercing so that may be the scary part when it comes to the jump scares but boneyard could be tricky i wouldn't drop at the center of scrapyard right away probably start at the outskirts of boneyard and work your way in there are sometimes crates also sitting in locations that you didn't know they actually could be in which is crazy so keep an ear out if you do have a headset on since the crates obviously do make distinct sounds and if you get lucky to get a helicopter try your best but again since the event is brand new you're gonna have a lot of sweats running thermos rocket launchers thermites c4s are a joke now because they got nerfed unfortunately so you'll see a lot more thermites than usual but now we also have the dam area so dam is typically a hot drop so don't get too frustrated if you can't find some of this trick-or-treat loot right away this one could be a bit tricky so try your best again maybe run dead silence if you can find it run around the outskirts of the dam and don't try attacking like near the center of the dam a lot of people are gonna be there it gets tough trust me when i tell you guys it took me about i want to say four hours to finally finish this and that's again based on rng i could have got it done a lot sooner if maybe i went to each location and found trick-or-treat on my first opening maybe but it would take me maybe four to five crates at each location to finally get what i needed now we then have the downtown a sniper's wet dream so be careful running around through the streets try your best to get into the buildings look at all the department stores maybe try some of those big rooftops grapple up and try your best now if you're running with a squad i would not recommend all going into one location and then all looting together i would recommend splitting up a little bit just so that you get to loot a little bit on your own you have a better chance of finding what you need if you're all in one location there's a slim chance that any of you guys are going to find anything it also feels like the rng with the crates has been turned down a bit since it feels like there's very little loot in some of these locations now i'm not sure if it's because of the event or maybe i'm just tripping i'm not sure what it is but we then have the storage town there's quite a bit of loot here at least there usually is but keep an eye out for all the storage containers some of those buildings in the middle you know under the staircase 
bonuses. Some of these should not be hard to get at all, but when you have a lot of enemies running in these spots, they may loot an entire area to the point where you get somewhere and there's just no loot left. That could happen, that just asks for a restart, but if Plunder gets too frustrating for you guys, you know, maybe consider hopping into Solos or to Zombies Royale. Try your best to do something just to take a break off Plunder and try your RNG in a different mode. Now, when it comes to the hospital, this one gets a bit tough just because of the lighting inside the hospital now. It is very dark. Enemies could be sitting in corners with incendiary shotguns. Things get rough in here, so definitely watch out for this one. Now, if you have a helicopter, you can kind of fly around the outskirts of the hospital and look for the supply drops or, excuse me, the crates that should be sitting on the rooftop. Shouldn't be too difficult. Now, also as a reminder, if you do this in Zombies Royale, you can't actually loot as a zombie, but you can loot as a human. And again, this does work even in modes that aren't at night night, such as regular Battle Royale, so keep that in mind. Now when it comes to the airport, airport gets a bit annoying sometimes, but I ended up getting lucky I think in my attempt when I went to the airport. There are quite a bit of loot locations, especially in the buses outside, on the parking lots, across the street. Airport's a fairly big area. Now what I also recommend is paying attention to what it says on screen. It'll tell you on screen if you're in a certain location. Just make sure it still says airports when you're running around the outskirts of the area. And if the location name changes, that just means you're not in airport anymore. And this goes for all locations. Make sure you're looting in those spots to make sure you get what you need. Now, when it comes to the quarry, this is a bit of a quiet spot most of the time, but I've had a couple of hot drops here, which got very annoying. This one took me a couple of attempts because if you just can't find loot in some of these buildings, that's it. Quarry's not that big of a actual location on Verdansk, and I had a couple of matches where some enemies were just going in, sweeping the actual location of all the loot, and it was just an automatic restart. There was just not enough loot crates at this location, but hopefully you guys have better luck than I did here over at the quarry. We then have Port, which is where Vacant is, one of the classic Modern Warfare multiplayer maps. Now, this location is fairly big, but for whatever reason, the RNG with loot was horrible, at least in my experience, and also with the party I was playing with. We had a very rough time over at Port. Took a number of games to finally find some loot. Do attack the cranes though. The cranes usually have what you need. I think every time I hit a crane, I was either getting a jump scare until I finally got the loot that I wanted. And if it's not the cranes, then try some areas around vacant, not inside of vacant. You might get a little bit lucky, but again, pure RNG. Who knows how unlucky we really were. But now when it comes to the stadium, stadium's already a bit of a hassle, right? We have the stadium key card Easter egg, which is purely based on RNG, finding those red access key cards. Super frustrating. So, stadium isn't that great, but there's quite a few loot boxes in the center by the helicopters and, of course, by the bar areas. Shouldn't be that difficult, but if there's a lot of teams dropping at stadium, you may have a rough time. That's just how stadium is sometimes. Now, with the gulag, this one's a bit weird because it doesn't actually have to be in the gulag, it could actually just be in the prison overall. It's probably renamed this one to just prison because we ended up finding the loot that we needed way outside of the gulag, way above ground. So, again, if you have a helicopter, try sweeping the rooftops as much as you can first, then slowly making your way into the actual prison. You can even attack some of the prison cells where intel is usually at, but if you want to go into the gulag, you can also attempt to enter the gulag through the sewer pipe that's at the very bottom of the prison. That's another alternative route. Now, when it comes to the lumber yard, this one was also a bit of a pain in the ass for me. I could not find the loot at lumber for the life of me, but it was probably because there were a couple of different squads also dropping at different points of lumber. There isn't much loot at this location, at least in my experience. So if enemy teams start swooping out this area, it's an automatic restart. But if you get lucky and other teams drop here as a hot drop, then try your best to sweep all of the buildings on the outskirts. Then work your way towards the middle. Don't rush too hard. Again, a lot of people are going to be sitting around here with snipers and thermals, at least from my point of view. It got annoying. But Lumber, I think, took maybe three restarts. Wasted a lot of time, but that was just the RNG of it all. Now, TV Station, for whatever reason, didn't take me very long. I've had a couple of friends who were in-game with me get it first try as well. There is quite a bit of loot at TV Station, whether it's on the roof, you know, towards the middle or even towards the actual broadcast room. There's a lot to go around in here. So as long as not too many teams drop in here, you should be okay with this. Hopefully you guys can get as many first try loot boxes as you possibly can. Since again, I totally know the feeling, right? Going into a location, looting six or seven crates and not finding what you need, maybe a jump scare or two, it sucks. But now we then have the Superstore. Probably the hardest of them all, or maybe we'll give it second place because we'll go over first place in a minute. But 
Second place as the hardest location to drop in, Superstore. There are a lot of sweaty teams dropping in here. I mean, you're gonna get a lot of people on the roof, a lot of people camping in the middle. It was rough. I mean, I'm not gonna lie about that one, but again, there's not much loot to go around either from what it seems, so I guess run through the front door, loot as much as you can by the cash registers, maybe try a couple of the rooms on the side of the Superstore. A lot of people camping with shotguns for whatever reason by the offices, so be careful as you enter the Superstore. It is not that easy to actually get through, and for whatever reason, it's most of the time a hot drop. A lot of enemy teams, especially the sweaty ones, love dropping at the Superstore, but getting towards the end here, we then have the hills this one isn't too bad i mean there's quite a bit of spots to actually get loot from a lot of houses in this area so as i said earlier make sure that it still says hills on your screen when you're running through this and there's enough loot to go around for maybe your whole team so if you guys want this is one of those locations where you can probably get away with all dropping here and all walking away with something decent whether it's decent loot some jump scares or maybe even the loot that you need for this easter egg definitely give it a shot and pray to the rng gods but now last and definitely not least we have what I consider the number one most difficult location to find your trick-or-treat from, the train. So as it says on the menu, the train is constantly moving. So when you spawn into a match, you never know where the train's gonna be. But what I will say, based on my experience, is that if the train spawns in far away from the hot drop and far away from the jump plane, you may get lucky with it. Try to drop on a helicopter and fly over to that train on your own. If you get lucky, hop onto it, and then there are about eight or so crates on the actual train. I have had games where a buddy of mine looted the entire train himself and could not find the loot he needed for the trick-or-treat. But in my experience, I looted it all on my own and found it almost instantly. It is based on luck. But if the train gets looted in your match, that's it. No more loot will spawn on the actual train. But again, if the train spawns in right where the hot drop is, you're probably gonna have dozens and dozens of teams dropping on the actual train. So if you get too frustrated with this on Plunder, like I said earlier, hop into a standard game of Battle Royale, maybe try Zombies Royale, try other modes to see if you get lucky with train spawns on the actual map. It gets tough, you know, trust me. I was almost on the train earlier and got sniped across the map by a hacker. I've had a game where I managed to get on the train and I just died from nothing. I just insta-died. I'm not sure what happened, but there's quite a few bugs going around, so keep an eye out for that. But once you've successfully gotten all the trick-or-treat locations, you now have unlocked 16 free items, which includes a nice looking watch, some stickers, emblems, charms, sprays, all that good stuff. And at the very end of it all, after all 16 items are unlocked, you then get the Pumpkin Punisher Blueprint for the growl assault rifle it's still one of the best weapons in the game by far and what's cool about this is that the cleaver melee weapon automatically unlocks for you when you pick up the loot from the gulag or prison location so there you have it two new weapons from the haunting of Verdansk event let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section about the rng with this easter egg what do you guys think about the zombies royale mode and what are your thoughts on this beautiful pumpkin punisher blueprint will you actually be using it or would you rather prefer a different blueprint for this weapon Weapon. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Zombies Royale mode. It plays interesting to say the least. It sucks that once you die as a zombie, that's just it. You're done. But I guess it makes sense considering the zombies are a bit overpowered. Maybe they'll change this in the next few days. And hopefully the full length and rumored Easter egg that people have been talking about does end up happening in the next week or so before the event ends. I think I do prefer Pandemic from Blackout, which is another version of this. But we'll see how this mode plays out over the next few days. I'll probably warm up to it a little bit more with time but that is about it this has been dk dynamite and peace out everyone